Hi, my name's Evan and I'm the Customer Success Manager at Smileback. In this video, I'll be showing you how to connect your Smileback account to ConnectWise Manage. So the first step, if you haven't done so already, is to create your Smileback account and then select ConnectWise Manage as your ticketing system. On this first page, you'll input details from ConnectWise Manage so that Smileback can connect through the API. You need to add the site URL and the company ID from your ConnectWise Manage account. Switch to ConnectWise Manage and then open the system menu. Go to the Members settings. Now you need to create an API member, so open the API Members tab. Click on the plus symbol to start a new member. You'll want to give the member a memorable ID. I suggest Smileback API. Pay close attention to the settings in the system section. The role ID is the overall permissions level for your Smileback API member. If you leave it on admin, then Smileback will have all the permissions it needs. However, if you prefer to create a custom security role, that's fine too. We have instructions in our help center and they will tell you the minimum needed permissions for Smileback to do its job. Please make sure that the level field is set to corporate level one. If it's below that, then Smileback may not be able to find all of your boards. In the service default section, please note the restrict board access field. Any board added to this will not be accessible to Smileback. So do not add any boards which you wish to use with Smileback. You can leave this empty, or you can add boards which Smileback does not need access to. When you're ready, save the member. Now open the API Keys tab. Again, click the plus symbol to create a new key. Give your key a description and then click Save. This is the only time that ConnectWise will show you the private key. So you may wish to store it somewhere secure, like an encrypted password manager. You need to copy both of these keys into Smileback. To ensure success, please make sure that you don't copy anything other than the key. I suggest double clicking on the key and you'll see it light up in blue. This means you are only copying the characters of the key itself and not any extra spaces or other characters. Copy and paste this into the public key field in Smileback and then repeat the step with the private key. Once again, making sure you don't copy anything other than the key itself. Then click the validate API connection button. After a few seconds, you should see a connectivity report. The most important section is the green success message right at the top saying that ConnectWise Manage is reachable. You will then see several more green and blue fields underneath. Don't worry if you see blue fields called manual check required. This just means that there are certain permissions which Smileback can't automatically test. If you use the security role admin, you can disregard this. If you created a custom security role, then please double check the settings. These blue fields will continue to say manual check required even when you have everything set correctly. So don't let it stop you from continuing. If you do not see this message and instead you get a red warning that Smileback cannot reach ConnectWise Manage, then that means there's something else we have to sort out first. The most likely cause of this is if you have your ConnectWise Manage behind a firewall. If that is the case, please get in touch with us. Email help at smileback.com and let us know that you're using a firewall. We can then activate fixed IP addresses for you and provide them to you so that you can whitelist Smileback. And if you have any other problems connecting, again, please email help at smileback.com. You'll now see your saved API settings and a green success message. Scroll down to the bottom of this page. Here you'll see the ticket resource formula. What this means is if you have multiple people working on your tickets, Smileback knows how to treat them and who to credit a review to. We've already selected a default for you, which is that all scheduled resources on the ticket will be named in the review. If you would like to change this, for example, to only show the owner of the ticket or to show everyone who worked on a ticket, whether or not they were scheduled, select the relevant option and then click the set formula button. And when you're ready, click continue. The next step is to create the survey snippet, which you will add to ConnectWise. ConnectWise Manager will use this to send out the Smileback survey to your customers. Upload your company logo so that the survey matches your own branding.
and then choose your survey language and if you want to use the marketing permissions feature. The marketing permissions feature means that anytime someone gives you a positive review and writes a comment, they will see a simple checkbox declaration underneath the comment, which they can use to give you permission to use their comment in your marketing. It's a really great way of getting authentic reviews and testimonials from your real customers. Once you've done that, you'll have a chance to preview the survey and generate a snippet. You can preview a simple version of the survey and then see how your logo will look on the comment page. From here, switch back to ConnectWise Manage. I'm going to show you how to add this survey to the status notification for an individual service board. Go to Setup Tables and search for Service Board. Choose the service board to which you want to add the Smilac survey. Then go to the Statuses tab. Choose the status to which you want to add the survey. Usually, this would be a closed, solved, or other status which comes near the end of the ticket. However, some companies like to put the survey on the second to last status and therefore use it as a sort of check that everything has gone correctly. If you don't currently have a status for a closed or a solved ticket, you will need to add one. When you want to use the survey with your real customers, you will need to click the external contact notifications box so that it is checked. However, if you're going to do some testing first and you want to send a smileback survey to yourself and other staff inside your company, please also check the internal contact notifications box. You want to make sure that the email notification will be going to the contact for this item, i.e. it will go to the person who raised the service ticket and is the main contact on that ticket. Then scroll down and look at the email design box. You probably already have some kind of status notification and some information entered in this box. It's important to give your customers some context about what the server is for. So it's a good idea to have a simple introduction line, which includes the contact's first name and the ticket summary and letting them know that it's been resolved. And you can use the variables which come with ConnectWise Manage itself to fill in this information. You should then put the survey as the next item underneath this introduction line. If you have a lot of text and images at the top of your email and the survey goes somewhere down underneath them, the chances are that very few of your customers will ever notice it's there. This is because most people are viewing emails in a preview window and they're not opening a full email and scrolling through it every single time. So make a little bit of space using a return key where you want to add the survey. Then click the source button in the top left of the edit field. You'll see here an HTML version of your email. Go back to Smileback and click the copy snippet button. That way you're sure that the whole snippet is added to your clipboard and you haven't copied anything else. Now paste that snippet into the space in your email notification and click save. Once you've saved, click the source button to go back to the normal view of the email. And you should now see the Smileback survey inside your email. The survey images may not load up inside this preview box. That's quite normal. I suggest sending a test email once you've done this and you can check how everything appears. You may also want to try sending it to an Outlook address, a Gmail address, and a couple of others. Once you're ready, you can then set the survey live by adding it to all the relevant service boards and by sending it to external contacts and not just inside your own company. And that's it.